to order. And we will uh, review the proposed agenda and entertain a motion. So moved, Schoberg. Second. Lights to go. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign. Okay, motion passes. Um, meeting, mi meeting minutes from the last planning and programming and zoning commission meeting. Uh, any questions or comments regarding the uh, minutes? I do not. Okay, if not, we'll go ahead and approve the make a motion for approval of the minutes of the April, f what was the date on that one? That was um, March 12th, 12. March 12th, 2024, as submitted or amended. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. So, so moved, do not. Second, Schoberg. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We'll have a presentation of the financial report from staff. This is Schrader with staff. Um, this is through February, which had put us at about 67% of the fiscal year. On the revenue side, looking down through the different subtotals, um, there's some over, some under with the um, revenue total at 50%. So we're a little behind, but not too drastic. And we'll hope to close out the year and be pretty close to on budget looking at the expense side um, looking down through those um, a little over. we're a little over as well mm, where's the grand total 72 percent which is not that much over so yeah. and again some expenses come like up front during the fiscal year so and if we're a little over, we may have to look at doing a budget amendment, but not too bad. Any questions or comments for staff? I just, yeah, I, I looked at the last year's year to date and today's year, year to date, and they're, they're pretty pretty close on all counts, expenses and I mean, some variances, but I don't, I don't have any questions either. So um, is there a motion? I make a motion to approve the finished report. Schoberg? Second. Do not. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Um, next item on the agenda is oral presentation. So this is the time when we, uh, we allow people to speak on a non-agenda related item. Please step up to the podium and state your name and address and your comments. Or if you're online, please state your name, address, and comments as well. Is there anybody wishing to speak on a non-agenda item at this time? Does not appear to be. We will move on to new business then. Um, the time is 4.04 p.m. and a hearing is scheduled at this time. It's a request by the City of Waterloo to rezone approximately 2.17 acres from M2 Heavy Industrial District to CP Planned Commercial District in order to allow for redevelopment of the Rath Administration Building into up to 87 affordable senior housing units located at 1515 Sycamore Street. These are on pages of 10, 10 through 19 of our commission packet. At this time, we should receive and place on file a statement of verification signed by Emily Siliga stating, I, Emily Siliga, do hereby certify that a copy of the attached letter, aerial photo, and site plan was mailed to each individual on the attached list by regular mail, March 22nd, 2024. So moved. Do not. Second. Nice to go. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Same sign? Aye. Okay. And we'll hear from the staff report. Motion carries. This is Schneider with staff. The applicant is requesting to rezone the property in question to allow for the building to be redeveloped and take into up to 87 sure, new sure. affordable senior housing units. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding neighborhood. The use will be a good addition to the area, which currently consists of the Human Services Campus, the Cedar Valley Fish Market, Viridian Credit Union, and other commercial and industrial uses. 
stormwater detention, a drainage report, and civil plans will need to be submitted to the engineering department. The area of the proposed site is currently zoned M2 Heavy Industrial District and has been zoned as such since the adoption of the zoning ordinance in 1969. Surrounding land uses and their zoning are as follows. To the north is Waterloo Women's Center for Change, Northeast Iowa Food Bank, and Operation Thres Threshold zoned M2 Heavy Industrial District. To the south is Crystal Distribution and Vacant Building zoned M1 Light Industrial District. To the east is Cedar Valley Fish Market zoned M2 Heavy Industrial District, and to the west is CNA Transport zoned M1 Light Industrial District and M2 Heavy Industrial District. The applicant is requesting to rezone a 2.17 acre parcel to CP Planned Commercial District to allow for up to 87 new affordable senior housing units in the former Rath Administration Building. The C2 the CP zoning will be compatible with the existing commercial and industrial properties surrounding the site. The Rath Admin Building is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Redevelopment of the site will be beneficial for the City of Waterloo as the old dilapidated structure will be used to help seniors have affordable housing and would have the historic structure and save the historic structure from demolition. Rezoning the land to a planned commercial district is meant to make certain that the City of Waterloo has a greater level of review for these sites to ensure the redeveloped sites are properly redeveloped to have a positive impact on the surrounding neighborhoods and that the surrounding neighbors have a greater level of public input for the redevelopment of these sites. Many of these residents have lived and invested in these areas for a long period of time and it, it is in their interest that the transition to residential sites is done in a way that is beneficial to their homes and businesses. These sites will need to uplift the neighborhoods and make surrounding neighborhoods encouraged with the redevelopment and secure that it is helping their property values and future investments in their own homes and businesses. The CP designation also gives the City of Waterloo greater levels of design review, provides for special provisions and care to be taken in site layout and design itself to ensure compatibility to adjacent land uses including screening, landscaping, building design, etc. It also provides for greater levels of public input as any changes to the development would require to be reviewed by the Planning, Programming, and Zoning Commission and subsequently the City Council after recommendation in lieu uh, thereof. It is for the explicit reasons of making this a high quality development that this is proposed to be rezoned. Senior housing requires one parking space for every two units plus five spaces per every 40 units or part thereof. So with the proposed 87 units, 54 parking spaces would be required. The site plan shows 84 parking spaces, which would exceed the requirement. The developers are proposed to expand the existing parking lot and restripe the current parking lot. The engineering department noted at Tech Review that a site plan with drainage shown will need to be reviewed. The building department stated building plans will be needed, and Welliver with the fire department explained the building will likely need to be sprinkled and will need to meet all other fire and building codes. Therefore, staff recommends that the request by the City of Waterloo to rezone approximately 2.17 acres from M2 Heavy Industrial District to CP Planned Residence District in order to allow for redevelopment of the RAF Administration Building into up to 87 affordable senior housing units located at 1515 Sycamore Street be approved for the following reasons. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area, and the request would not appear to have a negative impact upon pedestrian and traffic conditions within the surrounding area. The request would bring 80 or possibly 87 new affordable senior housing units to Waterloo and subject to the following condition that the final site plan meets all applicable city codes, regulations, etc., including but not limited to parking, landscaping, drainage, etc. And the site plan you have that was kind of thrown into your envelope is for this request.
there any questions for staff? Yes, you, oh. uh, this is do not. If assuming that this is approved, who would be running the complex? Who would be like, who would be governing the complex? Would that be like the Waterloo Housing Authority? This is Schrader with staff. I, I am not aware that it would be operated by the Waterloo Housing Authority. I think this would be a private development. Oh, okay, thanks. Mr. Silver? Uh, you made mention in the staff report about the parking spaces. I think right now the way it says there's 36 now, are they planning to add more to meet that 54 requirement? Mr. Schrader with staff, yes. So a site plan was included in your okay. packet yep. and that shows if, if you're looking at to the it's kind of angled streets in there, but north or northeast early side of the okay. building. On the right-hand side of that is the existing, and then they're proposing a new kind of on the left-hand side. This must have been after we got the packet then about. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank yeah, you. We, we had the packet almost ready to go in the mail, and we got the site plan. So Sounds good. Threw Thank it you. In there. It, it didn't make it in my, in my mail packet, but it only goes yeah. on the online version. Any other questions for staff? Um, at this time we'd ask if the applicant would like to make any comments, if, if they're online or in the room, you may make any comments regarding this uh, proposed change. It appears that the applicant's not, not available. Um, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak for or against the request? Um, if you wish to speak, please come to the podium or speak online and state your name and your address for the record. So we have nobody wanting else to speak on it and there's no other uh, questions. Um, entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved, Schoberg. Second, Schaefer. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, aye. same sign. Uh, Commission member that's online is, uh, can you state your name just to make sure we know for the record who is online? Sure, this is Janelle Ewing and I agreed with the motion. Okay, thank you. Uh, mo the hearing is now closed and at this time, uh, entertain a motion for the approval of the requested. Commissioner Shirk, I'd uh, like to make a motion to uh, approve the uh, request by the City of Waterloo to rezone approximately 2.17 acres from M2 Heavy Industrial District to CP Planned Residence District in order to allow for redevelopment for the RATH Administration Building um, into up to 87 affordable senior housing lo units located at 1515 Sycamore Street with the following condition that the following site plan meets all applicable city codes, regulations, et cetera, including but not limited to parking, landscaping, draining, drainage, et cetera. Second, Second. to okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Losing the words. Okay, motion carries. The next item is another hearing item and the time is 4 14 p.m and a hearing is scheduled at this time for a request by king automotive to rezone approximately 1.76 acres from c2 commercial district to m1 light industrial district to allow for the expansion of an existing salvage yard located south of 275 rampart lane it's on pages 20 through 28 of our commission packet at this time, we should receive and place on file a statement of verification signed by Emily Saliga. I, Emily Saliga, do here certify that a copy of the attached letter, aerial photo, and site plan was mailed to each individual on the attached list by regular mail, March 22nd, 2024. Could we have a motion to receive and place this notice on file, please? So moved, Schoberg. Second, Shirk. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Staff report. This is Schneider with staff. The request could appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding neighborhood, which consists of single family homes located along Independence Avenue, 
However, there are other industrial uses such as Benton's ready mix concrete and Waterloo oil near the facility as well. And the rezone area is over 400 feet from Independence Avenue. Screening will be required for the salvage yard business in conjunction with a special permit request, which has not been requested at this time. The property is located with, within zone AE 100 year floodplain, which is a special flood hazard area as indicated by the Federal Insurance Administration's flood insurance rate map. Staff does not see issues with the site being located within the 100 year floodplain because the applicant does not plan to build any structures on the property. The area of the proposed site is currently zoned C2 commercial district and has been zoned as such since the adoption of the zoning ordinance in 1969. Surrounding land uses and their zoning are as follows. To the north is King Salvage Center and Benton's Ready Mix Concrete, zoned M1 Light Industrial District. To the south and west are single family homes, zoned C2 commercial district and R3 multiple residence district. And to the east is Benton's Sand and Gravel, zoned M1 Light Industrial District. The applicant is requesting to rezone a 1.44 acre section of a 1.76 acre parcel to M1 Light Industrial District to allow for the use of a salvage yard for King Salvage Center. A portion of the parcel is currently zoned C2 Commercial District, which does not allow for salvage yard use. The applicant is requesting to rezone the parcel in an effort to expand the King Salvage Center to this parcel. The applicant is planning to apply for a special permit to expand business at a later date. The engineering department noted a site plan and drainage plan will be required for the expansion of the salvage yard business. And well over with the fire department stated access will need to be maintained throughout the site when the site moves forward with the business. Therefore, staff recommends that the request by King's Automotive to rezone approximately 1.76 acres from C2 Commercial District to M1 Light Industrial District to allow for expansion of an existing salvage yard located south of 275 Rampart Lane be approved for the following reasons. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area and the request would not appear to have a negative impact upon pedestrian and traffic conditions within the surrounding area and the request would appear to be compatible with the future land use map. Commissioner members, any questions for staff? Yes, Commissioner Lystico. Would there need to be conditions for screening put in place? This is Schrader with staff. So um, the applicants are proposing to expand salvage yard operations into this area, um, but that requires special permit approval. They also they own the existing salvage yard that's 275 Rampart Lane. There's another parcel to the south of 275 Rampart Lane that they also own, um, and they're interested in expanding some of the salvage operations into that as well. That one's already zoned industrial, so it does not need a rezone, but has some additional floodplain regulations um, and a flood way through it that will limit it. So they decided to just request the rezone of this southerly parcel for now, and we'll come back with a special permit over this parcel and whatever portion of that northerly parcel that they can that stays out of the floodway uh, portion so that they can comply with the, the floodplain regulations. So screening will be a component of that special permit when they apply, so it doesn't really need to be listed as part of this. Thank you. Good question, Commissioner Foley. Thank you. I have the same question. Any other questions for staff? Okay. Um, if the applicants are available and would like to make any comments, please come to the podium or speak online and state your name and your address. Doesn't sound like there's an applicant uh, available right now. Um, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak for or against the request? Again, uh, acknowledge uh, your presence by stating your name and your address and then state your comments. Does not appear that there's anyone to make any comments on this request. Uh, at this point, we'd entertain a motion to close the hearing. This is Schoberg, I make a motion to close the public hearing. Second, do not. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Same sign. Okay, the hearing has been closed. Um, at this time, we maintain a motion to approve or deny the request. Uh, Commissioner Lystico, I will make a motion to approve the request by King Automotive to rezone approximately 1.76 acres from C2 Commercial District to M1 Light Industrial District to allow for expansion of an existing salvage yard located south of 275 Rampart Lane. Second, Shirk. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Okay. Next item on the agenda, uh, it, the time is 4.21 p.m. and a hearing is scheduled at this time uh, for a request by Cedar Valley Lawn Care for a site plan amendment for a new 200 foot by 60 foot, it's a 12,000 square foot commercial building in the C2 commercial district and C2, CZ conditional zoning district located south of 4121 Alexandria Drive, some pages of 29 through 51 of our commission packet. At this time, we should receive and place on file a statement of verification signed by Emily Saliga stating, I, Emily Saliga, do we here certify that a copy of the attached letter, aerial photo, and site plan was mailed to each individual on the attached list by regular mail, March 22nd, 2024. Could we please have a motion to receive and place this notice on file? So moved, do not. Second, Shirk. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same. Motion carries. I'll have a staff report. This is Dornoff of staff. The applicants are requesting to build a 200 by 60, 12,000 square foot commercial building with 63 parking spaces located on Alexandra Drive. The request of constructing a new commercial building could have a negative impact on residential properties to the east. Therefore, we are recommending additional landscaping to buffer the properties from the new building. The area in question has been partially zoned C2 commercial district and is zoned as such since adoption of zoning ordinance 2496 and 1969 and C2CZ conditional zoning district has been zoned as such since the adoption of zoning ordinance 3951 on June 28, 1993. Surrounding land uses and their zoning designations are as follows. To the north is commercial and south town drive zone C2 commercial district. To the south is vacant land in US Highway 20 Zone C2ZZ, Conditional Zoning District. To the east is Residential Zone R3RP, Planned Residence District. And to the west is the Home Depot Store Zone C2, Commercial District, and C2ZZ, Conditional Zoning District. No screening is required in relation to this request. However, due to the proximity of the homes built in 2015 to the east, staff feels that a buffer of landscaping is needed to buffer those homes from the new development. And due to the homes being at a higher level, then the property requesting the site plan amendment, fencing would not provide an adequate buffer. A um, stormwater um, detention plan will need to be submitted to the engineering department for review and approval. The request will not appear to have a negative impact on drainage in the area as the applicants um, do show a stormwater management um, area in the site plan. Um, the development in history and commercial and professional offices built between 1981 and 1995 a residential built in um, 2015. The applicants are requesting to build a 20, 200 by 60, 12,000 square foot commercial building south of 4121 Alexander Drive. The building will be primarily have steel siding with the shorter portion being primarily beige and the taller portion being a dark color. Um, the shorter height portion of the building will have one set of doors and windows on the front side, uh, which faces west while the taller portion will have um, three sets of doors and windows on the back side, which faces east. And the residences, the shorter height portion of the building will have two sets of windows, while the taller um, height portion of the building will have one set of windows, one standard door, and three large roll-up doors, um, and four more standard doors. Um, the site plan shows 63 parking spaces. However, the exact number of parking spaces needed cannot be determined until actual uses are determined. Um, the 63 spaces appear to be more than um, many comparable buildings of this type, so staff feels that the parking should be adequate for the building. Um, a large number of building, um, new homes were built to the east of the property in 2015, therefore staff feels um, additional landscaping and buffering will be needed along the east portion of, to protect the residences. The buffering should consist of understory trees that 
grow to a height of better to protect the homes higher up than the property in question. Um, during technical review, um, Will Lover stated that um, being over 5,000 square feet, any automobile use, including storage and maintenance, will require sprinklers and possibly the whole building. That will be determined by the specific uses of the building. Therefore, staff recommends that the request by Cedar Valley Lawn Care for a site plan amendment for a new commercial building in the C2 Commercial District and C2CZ Conditional Zoning District located south of 4121 Alexander Drive be approved for the following reasons. The request is conformance with the comprehensive plan and future land use map for the area. The request will not appear to have a negative impact on traffic conditions in the area. Um, the request would not appear to have a negative impact to surround the area with the following conditions. That the final site plan means all applicable city codes and regulations, including the limited the parking, landscaping, screening, drainage, setbacks, etc. And two, that the east property line is landscaped in order to provide a buffer with the residential properties to the east and with understory trees spaced a maximum of 30 feet apart. I just had a quick question for staff. Is there any regulations or stipulations regarding uh, building and parking lot lighting when we're adjacent to a residential district like this? This is Schrader with staff. The zoning ordinance does not go into a lot of detail, but it does have a provision within the parking um, regulations that uh, prohibit um, the lighting from being shined directly on a budding residential property. Okay, and that would apply to the building itself as well as broadcasting light for the parking areas? Correct. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for commission or for the staff? We don't know what the use of this, intended use of this building is? This is Schrader with staff. No, the, uh, the applicant also owns the property to the south and east. Uh, and intends, uh, my understanding, a portion of the building will be um, space for his businesses and then the other will be available for lease. Uh, Commissioner Lystico, looking at the topography of this property, it looks like um, uh, the east and the north sides go downhill and this building would be constructed lower than the residential properties that are to the east of it, correct? Correct. Thank you. No, but it's, I'll, I'll, the lights would probably not go up like that. I mean, Any other further questions for staff? Okay. Um, at this time, if the applicant's available and like to make any comments, please uh, state your name and your address. Nick Brewer, uh, 2920 Cedar Falls, 2920 McLean Cedar Falls, representing Randy Vandersee. Um, let me know if you have any questions about this, but um, if you don't, we're excited to see the project move forward. Can you repeat your name, please? Nick Brewer. Nick Brewer. Any questions at this time, or? Doesn't appear so. Thank you. Uh, com uh, wait, oh, hold on. sir. Uh, Commissioner Lystico, you've been operating this business at that site already, correct? No. No, it's a it's a vacant site at this time. There's okay. no no buildings there. It's just a blank lot. It's a separate parcel, correct, from the adjacent property that has the. The owner's other business on it, correct? Correct, yeah, this is okay. a separate parcel. Owned by the same entity, but yes. They're correct. separate parcels. Yep. And you typically wouldn't be doing business operations past evening hours or anything, would you? No, and as I understand it, uh, this area is intended to be office space, so it wouldn't be operations would be at his other facility oh, okay. to, the, to the east. So. All right, thank you. Thank you. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to speak for or against the request, again, please state your name and your address and step forward to the podium or speak up online. Seeing there's no, no comments, uh, I entertain a motion to close the hearing. So moved, Schoberg. Second, do not. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, all those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Um, at this point, uh, 
we can take action and entertain a motion on the request. This is Commissioner Schaefer with, to approve the request by Cedar Valley Lawn Care for a site plan amendment for a new commercial building in the C2 Commercial District and C2 CZ Conditional Zoning District located south of 4121 Alexander Drive. Be approved for the following reasons. Meets conformance with the comprehensive plan. The request does not appear to have a negative impact on traffic conditions and the request would not appear to have a negative impact on the surrounding area and meets the following conditions. The final site plan must meet all applicable city codes and the east property line is landscaped in order to provide a buffer with the residential properties with understory trees spaced at a maximum of 30 feet apart. Second, Lysdico. Any further discussion or questions? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is a request by Brooke Tompkins, Tompkins for a special permit to allow for three chickens in the R2, one and two family residence district located at 1914 Baltimore Street. It's on pages 52 through 59 of your commission report. And we'll hear from staff on this topic. This is Schneider with staff. The applicant is requesting a special permit for a hobby farm that would allow up to three chickens on a 8,400 square foot lot located at 1914 Baltimore Street. The request could have a negative impact on the area as the area is composed of residential homes. The site in question and the residences surrounding the property are smaller lots than would be required by the zoning ordinance for any sized hobby farm and approval of the request could set a precedent. The site in question is zoned R2, one and two family residence district and has been zoned as such since the adoption of the zoning ordinance in 1969. Surrounding land uses and their zoning are as follows. To the north, east and west are single family homes. Zoned R2, one and two family residence district. To the south is single family homes. Zoned R2, one and two family residence district and west high school is zoned R3, multiple residence district. The future land use map designates this area as low density residential. The proposed hobby farm would appear to not be in conformance with the future land use map for this area. The applicant is requesting a special permit to allow a hobby farm within the R2, one and two family residence district to raise up to three chickens. The request could have a negative impact on the surrounding neighborhood. There are multiple homes in the area and the lot is 8,400 square feet. Therefore, a variance to the size requirement for a fenced area of 10,000 square feet for the first two chickens would be required. The site would require 12,500 square feet of fenced in area to have three chickens, but could only have approximately 2,300 square feet of fenced in area. And the entire lot size, including where the home is, is only 8,400 square feet. The applicant plans to build an approximately 175 square foot coop for the chickens either behind the garage or to the north of the home within the fenced in area. However, the applicant can only build an 82 square foot structure. The site currently has a 768 square foot detached garage on the property and the site is allowed up to 850 square feet of detached accessory structures. They also plan to let the chickens run in the fenced area occasionally. Therefore, staff recommends that the request by Brooke Tompkins for a special permit to allow for three chickens in the R2, one and two family residence district located at 1914 Baltimore Street be denied for the following reasons. The request could have a negative impact on the area as the area is primarily composed of single family homes on smaller lots and the request could set a precedent for similar requests which do not meet the requirements for a hobby farm. Questions for staff? Do not. Um, has have the rules changed involving urban area hobby farms since the last time that I've been on the commission? This is Schrader with staff. No, the rules have not been changed. There has been some discussion and a request um, by some members of the community that those rules be looked at and considered. 
um, being amended, but that has not been done as of yet. Okay, and then the second question was, it doesn't seem like in the in the pictures that's provided in the packet, it doesn't seem like the um, applicant would have any room, have any more sufficient room to build um, the hobby farm that they're requesting on the property, just looking at the picture. I, I agree with the comments that, I know we've had this come up several times in the past year or so on hobby, hobby farms. I know we've had some questions even on a much larger property with adjacent neighbors in the past and for us to set a precedent in in my opinion um, uh, when it's tremendously below the stipulated uh, ordinance right now uh, I, I, I worry that it would set a precedent and I'm just hoping that in the future we can revisit where those uh, areas per chicken came up and just make sure that we're that we're accurate of where we want to be in the future uh, if there's a chance for the for the commission to revisit that but uh, at this time, that's that's sort of my my comment on the on the precedent concern. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Lystico. I looked ahead on this agenda item, and I happen to live on Baltimore Street, so I've seen that it was an even number property. I said there's no properties on that side of the street that are large enough for chickens. There are a few that are on the odd side of Baltimore Street that are very large and would would do that, but that's not this case. So I, I will uh, be stating my opposition to this. Any further comments or questions for for staff? Okay. If the applicant would like to make any comments, please step forward or speak up online and state your name and your address. Okay. If there's anyone in the audience online or in the chambers that would like to speak for or against the request, again, please state your name and address. And if you're in the presence of the chambers, please step to the podium. Mr. Chair. Yes. D D Dave Bozen, Council Liaison. Is, is this a rental property? Because it's not the name on the application and the owner are two different people. I, I see it says the fiance of it, but is it a rental property that we're, you're, they're asking to rezone? Can staff confirm that? This is Schrader with staff. I'm, I'm not sure if it's... The father owns it and the father... So it's our understanding that it's a, a daughter and son-in-law that are... Um, I, yeah, I, living in or renting from uh, a father and are requesting the special permit. It's not actually a rezone, it's a special permit to allow a hobby farm. But but it, it could possibly be a rental, is what, I, is what you're saying. Yeah, I'm not familiar with their specific situation if you know it's actually being rented or not, but yes. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? On anybody in the audience? Isn't it, um, I had this sitting in my spot when I sat down, and it's um, regarding this. I didn't know if we need to address this letter here at all. Yeah, we received a letter. Is it just this initial part right here? Um, it appears it's from the applicant. Uh, due to current, yeah. current living situations, homeowners are needing to have fresh, and it talks about uh, the organic eggs within their home and the youngest child medical concerns. Um, but testimony from neighbors that they're not opposed to it from appears uh, approximately five neighbors. Um, well, there are only there are five. No, I one. Three. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. There's three addresses. I saw five names on there, but you're right. Three basically. It's three. Okay. Three locations. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but they have no comments or no problem. Pardon me. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, Do we need to take any action on this? No. Okay. All right. Any further comments or questions? Okay, entertain a motion <coughs> of action for this request. Uh, Commissioner Lystico, I will motion that the request by Brooke Tompkins for a special permit to allow for three chickens in the R2, 1, and 2 family residence district located at 1914 Baltimore Street be denied. Second, do not. Any further discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 
Both Aye. same sign. Okay, motion carries. Can we clarify that we're um, that we're motioning to or that we're approving that we deny the request? We're approving the denial of the request. Was the motion? Uh, motion was to uh, deny the request as outlined in the commission report. Next item on the agenda is a request by Blake Bonkamp for a special permit for the expansion of a storage facility, adding three new buildings in the C2 commercial district located at 4036 Logan Avenue. Staff report. This door and office staff, the applicants requesting to construct three new storage buildings on the site. The request would not appear to have a negative impact on the area. The area contains commercial businesses, um, vacant land, and some residences. Um, the site is currently zoned C2 commercial district and zoned such since the adoption of zoning ordinance 2479 in 1969. Surrounding land uses and their zoning are as follows. To the north, vacant land and residences, zoned C2 commercial district. To the south, um, vacant land, um, vacant agricultural land, zoned C2 commercial district and R1, one and two family residence district. To the east and west, vacant agricultural land and homes, zoned A1 agricultural district. Um, there would be need um, screening as part of this request to the neighbor residences. The previous owner was required to put up a fence, but has it has not been completed. The applicant will need to um, work with the engineering department to determine what additional stormwater detention is required for the site. Um, the area is primarily composed of commercial uses built between 1953 and 2006, but a few residences built between 19, 1930 and 1956. Um, the site received a special permit on November 22nd, 2005 to allow for storage units and received a special permit to allow for outside storage of vehicles on October 24th, 2023, along with a three-year variance to the hard surfacing requirements. The applicant is requesting a special permit for the purpose of constructing three additional storage units that are 40 by 200, 30 by 250, and 10 by 10 in size. The parking um, required for a storage facility is one parking stall for every two employees, and the applicant has indicated that there would be less than two employees at the facility. The site contains more than adequate parking with a paved area, 30 by 190 of 5,700 square feet. In addition to placing fencing along the residential properties, the applicant will need to work with engineering department, submit a drainage plan just to address drainage tension within the site. Also, more detailed site plan is needed, including showing setbacks and defining vehicle use areas. As provided, the rest request will not appear to meet setbacks and does not leave enough space for stormwater detention. During tech review, it was noted by Welliver from the fire department that they will need to um, see a final site plan to ensure that they have proper access. Knudsen noted that they will need a drainage plan for the new development, but also the existing detention pond will need to be brought back into its original condition. Therefore, staff recommends that the request by Blake Baumkamp for a special permit for three additional storage buildings be approved for the following reasons. Uh, it appeared a special permit um, would not have a negative impact on the area if properly screened. The request would have a minimum impact on surrounding properties if properly screened. The request would be in conformance with the future land use map and comprehensive plan for the area, subject to the following conditions, that the final site plan meets all applicable city codes, regulations, including but not limited to parking, landscaping, drainage, et cetera, that a solid fence of at least six foot in height be installed. And this says along the east property line, but it um, should be um, along the property lines with the adjacent residences. The existing detention basin needs to be restored to engineering satisfaction, and de new detention needs to be installed for additional development. All vehicle use areas will need to meet hard surfacing requirements by October 31st, 2026, when the temporary variant issued by the Board of Adjustment expires. Um, all you had at your uh, letter about this item, um, it's a three-page letter. Um, it's The first couple paragraphs says they are not in opposition to it. The rest really does not involve this specific request. It talks about overall items that does not apply to this. So but it's something you can read it. Yeah, I was gonna bring that up, uh, Mr. Dornoff, that uh, we did receive the letter and I, I briefly went through it and it does talk about uh, urban sprawl and things like that. But um, I guess my, my 
question or comment for confirmation for staff would be that this is obviously a privately held piece of property within the city limits, so it's a proper piece of parcel land within the city limits already zoned, and uh, uh, I think the letter was well thought out and reasoned, but uh, uh, and it might be directed at, at better individuals than what the commission's charged here to do with, and that is to review existing properties within the within the city boundaries and determine whether or not the requests are appropriate given the ordinances. Mrs. Schrader with staff, I, I concur with that. And then one minor correction in the staff report, it noted that the additional storage buildings would, would include a 40 by 200, a 30 by 250 um, foot, not inch, and then 10 foot by 10 foot, it's 10 foot by 110 foot. So thank you, just a minor change there. Any other questions or comments for staff? This is do not. Um, has the applicant or the person making the request uh, met the uh, met the items or the concerns of the departments as outlined in the staff report? This, this, is, this is Schrader with staff. The applicant has been made aware of them and will intend to. The applicant is proposing to purchase the property, so does not actually own it yet. He's got a purchase agreement in place. Um, subject to getting this approval so that he knows he can build the additional buildings. So if he gets this approval, then he will close on purchasing the property and then work on addressing all of those provisions. Yep. Just asking because I was counting like three or four various, three or four different various departments that were saying, we have this concern, we have that concern, and we want those addressed. Okay. Yep. Any other questions or comments for staff? Okay. Um, if the applicant's available and would like to make any comments, please state your name and your, and your uh, address. Thank you, everyone. My name is Blake Baumkamp. I live at 1823 Rainbow Drive. Uh, just a few questions on some of the, the concerns we talked about um, that were there. It says a request for a final site plan. Does that need to come before this board again for approval or who does that need to go to? This is Schrader with staff. This is the special permit which goes to the Planning Commission for um, recommendation and then the Board of Adjustment for final approval. That Board of Adjustment meeting is already set for Tuesday later this month. Uh, and then once the final site plan is developed, no, that is just a uh, internal um, staff review unless significant changes are made which would uh, not be considered minor in nature, which would then have to come back through this process. But as long as it's, um, you know, generally speaking as approved, the final site plan is an administrative review. Examples might be if the number of buildings or the size of the buildings change or the paved area was changed or reduced or things like that. So uh, it's as long as those things are what have been proposed here, and then it's an internal staff review. Okay. All right, thank you. Also on the solid fencing along the east line, um, you guys kind of went back and forth on, yes, uh, it bordering residential land, but the, the two lands, uh, properties to the east are zone C2 and A1. Um, so I'm not seeing the need for a solid fence there. Just looking for uh, comments on that. This is Schrader with staff, so the, um, sorry, I think the, I don't have the zoning right in, in front of me, but both of those abutting properties are uh, a residential use. So normally we, we do require um, screening from a residential use, even if it is zoned differently. Uh, obviously the commission can uh, take a look at that and, and determine how they want to make that recommendation, but the staff's recommendation is to include it on um, that the two property lines that abut those adjoining residences, not counting the south, the southerly leg that where there's an existing building already adjacent to that residence. Question for staff. Um, this is maybe related exactly to this request, but it said that we approved the variance, um, I think 2023 originally, mm -hmm. and the fence was never put up. Who, whose responsibility is it, is it to go follow up on that being done or not? Um, to Schrader with staff, that, that is our department's. Um, I, I don't think the time period 
um, for getting the fence was too far lapsed, and and then okay. the owner was proposing to sell it. And <coughs> we've been working with the the applicant okay. proposing to buy it. Okay, thank you. Um, and then another question on that the privacy screen. If we determine that that is necessary, would uh, slats in a chain link fence count as a solid fence, or you know privacy screens? Um, I've seen get approved, so. Schrader with staff, again, the, the commission can kind of review that and determine how they want to make a recommendation. It was staff's recommendation to, to be a uh, solid fence of such like uh, wood, vinyl, or similar, um, and not a chain link fence with the slats. Um, I get that um, a chain link fence with the slats can provide nearly as much visual screening as a solid fence does, but I think it does so in a way that's not residentially compatible. And I, I get maybe this one's a little bit unique since the properties to the east are not actually zoned residential, so maybe the commission feels like chain link fence with slats would be sufficient. I can see the, the the property sort of to the south and to the directly to the east of the other existing long building um, on the site plan area. It shows a, a blue roofs on those. That's zone C two. But what about the next property over? That is zoned. What is the next one over from that? The next parcel that ha appears to have a residence on that is that R. So the, the all the residents on that East Big Rock Road there seem to be zoned A one. A1, okay. Um, currently on the Beacon site. I don't know if that's not necessarily up to date or. What were the requirements that were put in place for the, in, back in 23 as far as the fencing? You said it was solid fencing that was requested as part of the, as part of the solid approval? Solid fencing that was required as part of the uh, approval of the Board of Adjustment for and the special permit to expand the yard area and the temporary variance to let it be gravel for the temporary period. And that was along the whole east side, essentially? Yes. Okay. Well, yes, not of the expansion area, which is that north end of the property. Oh, okay, of the expansion area, yeah. okay. So there currently is a chain link fence along the east line that doesn't butt up against the A1 line, just that little site C2 district in the bottom right corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There is a chain link fence there. Right. So I don't know if they approved yeah. that as just chain link and. Y yes. Okay. Okay. Well, they didn't really address, that was already there and they didn't address that. It was the, the requirement on the east was just for that expansion area on the north side of the property. Okay. I think the commission will discuss this before we have a, a motion. Any other questions? Uh, hard surface requirement. Um, you know, it's, it is a quite a large area, you know, to go with the cement and four inch asphalt requirement. Uh, would there be any sort of leeway on doing like a crushed asphalt means that it's a low traffic area, um, crushed asphalt once sets up, once it's set up is very hard and drains well, um, with the proper drainage plan set in place. So, uh, I would have to, I guess I got to. Something to add to that? The straighter of staff. So that would be a variance to the request, which uh, if special permits do go before the Planning and Zoning Commission um, for their recommendation. They certainly can, you know, discuss potential or, or, you know, stated variances that will be needed and provide input, but the act, they don't provide a recommendation on variances, and that would be at the purview of the Board of Adjustment. So you have to make the, you'd have to make the request at the Board of Adjustment for that variance yeah. as part of our approving we would not be stipulating that in our I, right, motion. but you certainly yeah. can discuss it and, and provide your thoughts. That yep. is. I was going to add that I think since the board of adjustment already decided on that, is something that we cannot alter. Mm -mm. Okay, correct. But generically, can g g generically can this commission make recommendations that um, that the Board of Adjustment would take under advisement? Yes. I agree with what Cody said. I was just trying to go with the generic. So right now the 
the ordinance requires the, the solid paving. Yeah, the straighter staff, the yeah provisions in the ordinance. See if I can get turn to the correct section. Requires uh, four inch hot mix asphalt on a six inch rock base or five inches of Portland cement concrete. Um, or a similar design approved by the city engineer, as long as it is similar to hot mix asphalt or Portland cement concrete, rock treated with oil or emulsion, an oil or emulsion treated surface or seal coat shall not be approved. So, but yes, he can submit a request for a variance to that, mm -hmm. and the Board of Adjustment has granted um, a, a few sites. Uh, you know, in a, you know, not just a temporary variance like this site currently has, but a, a permanent temporary variance for recycled asphalt kind of on a trial basis for a couple of sites, so. Okay. And this site has a variance until 2026. Correct. And you can, op can you apply to extend variances? This is straight or a staff, yet yes, you could apply for a request to extend or apply for a variance to go with a different type of uh, material that um, would, and, and ask for that variance to be permanent. Either would be an option for them to request, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. And that variance would remind me again, I'm, I haven't looked thinking about something else. 2026 variance is a place for what specifically? The solid? Staff report. I yeah. believe so. It says it right. Uh, yeah, October 31st, 2026 is when the current temporary variance to allow the um, the gravel will expire. But okay. he, he I mean, so he can leave it as that and deal with that later. In, later, or he can submit a request for a variance that would go before the board later this month to extend it further. further. Or to request a mm -hmm. permanent variance of a okay. uh, different material like recycled asphalt. Okay. Anything else? Yep. Thank you for the comments. Uh, last point is on the stormwater retention pond. Um, it was kind of unclear. The city's main made the comment that it was just not properly maintained. Um, not quite sure what that means. Is it not adequate uh, as a stormwater retention pond? Obviously the the future use of the site would be that we buy it and immediately add on. So we didn't know if we had to get the current retention pond up to code first, and then we could start building, or if we could just build and just do the retention pond all as one. Jamie Knutson, city engineer, the current pond that is on the southerly end of the property, just it needs to be cleaned out and brought back up to proper condition the way it was originally. Um, that can be done either now or simultaneously with the project as you do it. So either way is fine with us. We just wanna make sure that while you're doing your construction, you bring that up to back to its original condition. All right, thank you very much. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you guys. Uh, good you. questions, thank you. Appreciate your patience. Um, I think if we have a little bit further discussion here, uh, as far as the fencing, um, that can be a special variance to them, but we can make a recommendation. What are the commission members' thoughts on the fencing? Uh, Commissioner likes to co if there's already some style of fence and part of that property line, if there were to be more of the same, I don't see any issue with that. As long as it does provide some form of screening, so like the slats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we we do like the slats. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think what I think what Commissioner Lesko is saying is, is that there's some chain link fencing there right now, and there was some request for some some screening privacy screening prior to the owner deciding to sell this property to the to the proposed uh, uh, proposed purchaser. Um, that if we were to follow that same kind of design. Um, but have it screened with slats, then that's maybe an amenable compromise on both sides of the, of the issue here. I think my, my thoughts on the fencing thing is like when that request was made originally when it got approved, that, that chain link fence may have been there, but 
the requests uh, said that it had to be solid on the east. It just never got done. Right? Okay. It, for yeah, the the existing chain link on the south side wasn't at question. The the uh, requirement for additional uh, solid fencing was on the part north of that in in the expansion yard. Do you know though? Was was that southerly portion of the east side of the fence? I feel like I'm talking directions. <laughs> was it? What, should it have been a privacy fence, a screened privacy fence at that point? Uh, it it was not required to be. Oh, okay. Previously, okay. I, I don't know the history of when that was, um, you know, approved and, and built. It's been there for quite a few years. As I just look at the site plan, that's. I mean, to me, that's the one that actually needed it more than the other side, honestly. So. Fair. <laughs> and what was that? What was that requirement for solid fencing tied to? What was that request? What was it? What the request come from again? It came from the. Uh, it came through from the special permit request in 2023 to expand the storage. the storage yard on that northerly half. It's not exactly half, but the northerly half ish of of that site. And that was approved by the Board of Adjustment with a condition of, of okay. fencing along that. So the Board of Adjustment side. made that request. Made that re uh, condition. Made yes. that condition, not, not the Planning and Zoning Commission and not the staff. Okay. Uh, we'd have straighter with staff. It was probably a, a recommendation of staff, so it was probably included in your recommendation too, okay. unless you specifically okay. altered our recommendation. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, regards to the the pavement um any comments or questions on that um no this is straighter with staff um i mean and see if jamie wants to get back up and and talk about some of the alternatives like recycled asphalt um it, it's not something at this point in time we've been willing to amend the code to allow but but there have been a couple of variances granted so i guess we could take a look at this you know specific site if if they do propose that variance yeah. well i guess at, th at this point um there's a couple of conditions that we're considering that's the fencing and the, and the paving and any recommendations that we'd like to make uh, along with the initial request so i i think be entertaining a motion uh, on the need, request. I don't know if we had others speak on the agenda. Oh, I don't I think we, we did. needed to. Yep. Thank you. If anyone else even wants to. Yep. Um, is there anyone else in the audience or online that would like to speak for or against this request by the applicant? Mr. Chair? Yes. Dave Bolson. Uh, and, and I sit in on the Board of Adjustments meetings. When, when the Board of Adjustments granted that variance for that northern portion to be uh, gravel for two years, because it was explained to them that it was just going to be parking for like campers and motor homes and things like that. Building construction of construction was never brought into that variance. Correct. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Bozen. I think what we can do is entertain a motion and second, we can further discussion before we do a roll call vote, but we need to probably uh, propose a, a motion either way on the request with stipulations or no stipulations. Uh, this is Schoberg. I'll make a re recommendation to approve the request by Blake Bornkamp for a special permit for three additional storage buildings with the following conditions, that the final site plan meets all applicable city codes, regulations, et cetera, including a limited to parking, landscaping, drainage, et cetera, that a fence with at least slats inside of the chain link uh, go along the east property line, the existing detention basin needs to be restored to the engineer's satisfaction, and a new detention, new detention basin needs to be installed for the additional development, and all vehicle vehicular areas, vehicular use areas must meet the hard surface requirement by October 31st, 2026, with the temporary variance issued by the Board of Adjustment. Second, Lysticko. Any further discussion? 
So it's within the condition that they'll have to do the fencing as required and they'll have to do whatever paving we we request or require. Correct, but his, his motion on the fencing does allow for chain link with slats. Okay. Yes, and, and as far as the paving, that's a request that they can make to the Board of Adjustment for a variance on. And also the um, water retention area, right? The, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Correct. Yep. yep. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is a request by Riverbank Investments LLC for the minor plat of I think I'm pronouncing this correctly. A Gretan addition, a three lot commercial subdivision in the C2 commercial district located at 935 Shearer Avenue. Staff report. Just start off with staff. The applicant's requesting a plat the property in question for the purpose of separating a large commercial lot into three smaller commercial lots. Um, the sign in question is on C2 commercial district is on such since the Adoption of zoning ordinance in 1969. Surrounding properties zoning and their uses are as follows. Um, to the north is University Avenue Frontage Road, University Avenue and Commercial Zone C2 Commercial District. To the east is Commercial and Residential Zone C2 Commercial District. To the south is Residential Zone 1 and 2 Family Residence District. And to the west is Residential Commercial Zone R2 1 and 2 Family Residence District and C2 Commercial District. The applicant is requesting a minor plot of Grattan addition, a three lot commercial subdivision. Lot one is 0 0.41 acres. Lot two is 0 0.9 acres. And lot three is 0 0.89 acres for a total of 2.2 acres. Each of the lots will have a five foot utility easement along the perimeter of the lots. And lot one will have an additional 10 foot utility easement running through the eastern portion of the lot. During tech review, um, Knudsen noted that Development does occur. Drainage will be a difficult issue as there is runoff issues from the existing building to the homes on Flower Street. The subdivision ordinance requires the plat submissions. I include such criteria as boundaries of properties, proposed streets, easements, widths of right of way, utility locations, contours, as well as surrounding land uses. The plat does not contain all details required. However, given the minor nature of the split, the additional information would not appear to be needed as a plastic coordinates with the intent of the subdivision ordinance. Therefore, staff recommends that the request by Riverbank Investments LLC for a minor plat of Grattan addition, a three lot sub commercial subdivision in the C2 commercial district located at 935 Shearer Avenue be approved for final reasons. The plat is in accordance with the intent of the subdivision ordinance can be served by existing utilities and the plat is in accordance with the comprehensive plan. Questions for staff? Where are the fees? <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused by all the lines on this yeah. uh, site plan, but I see I mean, the main building obviously is uh, kind of what I'll call like the northwest corner, but then. They get an easement for them or whatever. Is this maybe going to be the third lot? It looks like from what I'm seeing is you got one, you got lot three, lot one, and there's one here, one here, and one here. Yeah, so that lot one, lot yeah, two yeah, so is three, the north. Yeah. yeah, lot two is the northwest corner that has the building. existing building on it. Yep. Yep. And then there's parking lot that extends onto the rest of that. You know, on the kind of the southwest corner is what would be lot one. And the northeast corner is lot three. Um, the uh, owner of the site, which is now a furniture store, um, is determined that he's got way more um, parking and un unutilized land than he needs nice. for the furniture store. So he's looking to split it off and, and, and try and sell off a couple of outlots. Lot three is um, 
kind of setup where there's that pretty large retaining wall that cuts say, through the how site. Would you be able to do anything it, with yeah. that. Yeah. So it mm -hmm. that would have to, you know, there'd be some work as part of that redevelopment, but more than likely it would end up being something similar to the existing building that has a oh, yeah, yeah, has a portion of it accessible from that high side and then a walkout portion accessible from the low side. Yep. I'm assuming that's an easement that I'm looking at on that first lot wherever it went. If, if it's the kind of the longer dashes, yeah. that, that is the easement. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we'll have access. Okay. Give me a second too. Okay. Yeah. Drive the wrong person. Yeah. Any other questions for staff? Yeah. I hear. It's just that I'm not able to write it down. Um, if the applicant's available and like to make any comments, please state your name and your address. Dan Aarons with VJ Engineering, uh, 1501 Technology Parkway. Um, engineer, uh, my surveyor uh, created this plat, so I just wanted to be here to represent uh, represent the owner, uh, Mr. Gratton. Eric pretty much laid out um, kind of his reasoning uh, for splitting this off. He, He's got so much parking he's maintaining, doing snow removal and all of this, and, and it's not needed now that it's not a two-story restaurant, mm -hmm. um, but it was two restaurants at one time. So uh, he's not even using the parking that he has right in front of the building, let alone maintaining all that in the rear. Um, there was a comment by staff on the plat, um, uh, missing some items. I don't think that is the case. There was a second page uh, of that plat that did contain that information so yeah but if there is anything missing uh just let us know and we would get that updated but i think that is all included um do you guys have any questions for me while i'm up here if, if we can't find the second uh second page to that plat can he um just send it into the staff and he, then it can just be approved <coughs> this restrictor was staffed yeah we we have both pages as well so we'll We'll review with the engineering department. Yeah, I know there was a, a list of corrections that have already been done and we've got. So we'll, I, yeah, I think it's good. But if there are any remaining issues, we will certainly make sure though they're addressed before it would go on to the city council. And, it, and, it, and at that time, it doesn't need to come back here before nope. it goes to the city council. No, it would not. Dealt with. Thank you. Any, uh, is there anyone else in the audience who'd like to speak for or against the request? Please state your name and your address. Here's not. Um, call for a motion for the request. Mr. Schoberg, I'll make a motion that we approve the request by Riverbank Investments LLC for the minor plat of Grattan Edition, a three lot commercial subdivision in the C2 commercial district located at 935 Shearer Avenue. With no conditions. <laughs> Given that all parts of the plat um, are given to the office or to the staff in the office? Yeah. Yeah, I'll make a condition that all parts of the plat or questions answered are addressed yeah. with staff. Prior to sending. Prior to gotcha. sending. Yep. yep. Good. Thank you. Second. Sure. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Those opposed? Aye. Same sign. Motion carries. The last item on the agenda right now is amendment to the city of Waterloo zoning ordinance. Okay, this this is Schrader with staff. Staff is proposing an amendment to the zoning ordinance that will update uh, terms and definitions as they apply to the floodplain regulations. Uh, this is to make the regulations be in compliance with the uh, Iowa Department of Natural Resources, what they refer to as their model ordinance. It's a minimum set of requirements that a community must adopt to be compliant and remain a participating member in the National Flood Insurance Program. Uh, so FEMA has prepared a new set of floodplain maps for Blackhawk County, including the cities within Blackhawk County. The new floodplain maps will become effective May 8th, 2024, and FEMA requires that a community adopt the maps and updated regulations prior to the effective date uh, of the new maps to remain program compliant. So um, the, the changes to the ordinance itself, um, I, I won't go through all of them. They're, they're mixed throughout the ordinance. There's a lot of changes in the definitions section uh, and then 
changes within the main section of the zoning ordinance that uh, provides for the floodplain regulations, breaks out the floodplain regulations into uh, the different districts, such as the floodway district, the floodway fringe, which is the 100-year floodplain, uh, a general floodplain, which is the zone 100-year floodplain areas that have not been uh, detailed studied, and a shallow flooding overlay district um, um, and provide for all of the restrictions on enforcement of the ordinance as it pertains to the floodplain regulations. And all of these uh, changes uh, have been reviewed by the Iowa Department of Natural Resources and um, they've, we've been working closely with them to ensure that what we uh, would propose to change would meet their minimum requirements and they have signed off on that. This is um, a time sensitive request. We are already uh, looking at getting this to the city council as quickly as possible. There may actually be a special meeting uh, held to make sure we can keep this thing moving along um, prior to the effective date of the new floodplain maps. Like I noted are set for May 8th. Um, so we would prefer to remain uh, program compliant with DNR and FEMA. So, um, Any questions on the specific amendments? This is do not, the clarifying question is on the agenda. This is item D1, right? Because there's two C1s and then it goes C2, C3, but I don't think that that's what the agenda meant. This is D1. D1. Yeah. Okay. It, so I would like to offer a motion. Proceed. So this is do not, and I'm offering a motion to accept and adopt um, the items um, under D1, um, adopting the floodplain, regu regu floodplain regulations as outlined in uh, the packet on page 84 and as presented by staff in discussion. Is there a second? Second, Schoberg. Any further discussion or questions? One question. Is there like, how substantially did it change the floodplain map? Like, is there stuff that we've approved that's going to now be in the floodplain? Um, the actual, you're, you're talking about I the mean, actual maps themselves, yeah, yes. right? So uh, generally speaking, it doesn't change the maps too drastically. Um, really the only area of note where it is somewhat significantly changing, increasing the amount of uh, an area that's in the floodplain is down in the uh, Southland Park area, down like Charm, Southland, mm -hmm. I forget some of the other streets, but kind of in the mm -hmm. southwest corner of the city. Mm -hmm. um, so FEMA is using uh, more updated LIDAR uh, data, which is aerial image with uh, elevation information so that they can uh, more accurately uh, depict where a 100-year flood yeah. level would hit. Most of the other areas um, have either no change or very little change on some of the Zone A unstudied. The only um, caveat to that is there's some areas where the new maps aren't even covering because when FEMA initiated this process, the uh, flood panels for Waterloo that touched any part of our flood control system at that time were still provisionally accredited because of some <laughs> issues that we had with the reaccreditation process of the levees, which is all fixed. They're completely accredited, but since FEMA hadn't done anything for updating those panels, this will only adopt new panels on basically everywhere else. Otherwise, the ones that touch part of the flood control system will remain the old maps, which is a little odd, but okay. it's what we get. That's, uh, those are zone X or protected by levy anyway? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, there are some areas where there are some zone A's that, you know, are the panel um, might touch part of the flood control, but there might be another um, stream further off from uh, that, that that's okay. still then not getting remapped, and it'll, okay. the existing maps will remain effective for those. Okay, thank, thank you. you. So, do I need to amend my motion? No, you don't. No, no, no yeah, not at all. it doesn't cover. Yeah, that's all good. Any further questions? None. No. Okay. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. 
Motion carries. Um, any other discussion items? None. Okay. Uh, I'm hearing a motion for adjournment. So moved, Joburg. Second. <laughs> we fight over it. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. I'm not opposed.